topic, I want to talk about object-oriented programming. Inheritance and classes. Okay. Hopefully, this is a review of some of the things that you've covered in 108. Um, but I just want to bring everybody together so that you know where we are and where we're where we're moving towards. If I have some Java code, say I write something like this: int i is equal to 10. How much memory does i take? How much does it require? How much does it, is it allocated? Four bits. Four bytes. It's four bytes. So an int takes four bytes in Java. A short takes two bytes. A long um, is eight bytes, and so on. Okay. If I instantiate an object, and I'm going to use um, an example throughout the class of basically uh, people, students, undergraduates, faculty, kind of a, as if we were writing a program to describe people at the university. But let's say I instantiate an object. Student s is equal to new student. How much memory does s take? <coughs> it depends on the object and um, what happens is the Java virtual machine takes a block of four bytes for s and those bytes point to a space on the heap that are used to store everything associated with whatever is in the student class. Okay? So if the student class, for example, has some integers or some strings, the Java virtual machine goes through and it says, OK, I know I need five integers and 10 strings and these other objects. So I can calculate how much memory I need for a student object I can allocate on the heap a certain amount of space that's going to belong to this student. And I'm going to have a pointer that's four bytes, and that pointer points to that space on the heap. And like my pointer that points to a random spot. Okay. And so the Java virtual machine needs to understand what a student object is and where a student object comes from so that it can allocate a certain amount of space. And the way that it does that is through inheritance. Okay? So the JVM looks at what this student object is, what it's inheriting from, where it came from, to figure out how much space on the heap to allocate. So if we had a more complex situation, let's say we have um, a class person. And in our person class, maybe they're a person at the university. So everybody at SDSU has a red ID. I have a red ID. All of the administration have red IDs. All of you guys have red IDs. So it doesn't make sense that in my student class, I have a red ID variable. It makes much more sense that I have a person class that has red ID. It makes more sense that my person class has a name. Everybody at SDSU has a name. Everybody has an email. So now what I can do is I can have a person class that has the things that are attributes of people, like names, red IDs, email addresses, physical addresses, phone numbers, 
all of the things that we all share. And then I can have a student class. And my student class will have things, um, for example, maybe your uh, GPA that we're trying to remember. Maybe the classes that you've studied, you've taken, and so on. And then maybe I have an undergraduate class. Because we have different kinds of students. We have graduate students, we have PhD students, we have master students, we have undergraduate students, we have former students. And we might want to keep information about all of those. And so my undergraduate student maybe has a year variable associated with it. So instead of having students where I have red ID, name, email in my student class and having to copy all that code, and instead of having undergraduates where, again, I copy all of that code, what I can do is I can set up a situation where I say, you know what, students are people, too. Well, most of them. Undergraduates are students. If students are people and undergraduates are students, then undergraduates are also people. Okay. So I have an inheritance here where everything in undergraduate comes from student and everything in student comes from person. The way that we do this is using extends. And so in our class definitions, we would say public class person, and this is our top level class, yeah. So we have our, our person class, now we have our student class, and the way that we invoke inheritance in Java is we say that this extends person. Okay? So when we invoke the student class, the JVM says, oh, that's extending person. That means we can come up and grab everything that's in person and get all of those methods. And then similarly, we have our undergraduate class that extends student. So undergrad extends student, student extends person, therefore undergraduate extends person. The undergraduate doesn't have to say it extends person, that's given by the fact that student extends person, and each class can only extend one other class. In some languages, you can extend multiple classes. It's called multiple inheritance. But it becomes complicated because if I had another class that I extended from that also had, for example, a red ID variable, and I extended from two different classes, how would I know which one I was calling? There are ways of dealing with that, but the way that Java deals with it, and many languages deal with it, is by saying, we're not going to allow multiple inheritance will only allow you to inherit from a single class. And so what that means um, for a hierarchy is we can draw our hierarchy looking a little bit like this. So here's our undergraduate. And they have extended student and a student has extended a person. And as we talked about at SDSU, we also have faculty, okay, who are mostly people. Some of them are robots. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, we may have, maybe we have tenure track faculty and maybe we have lecturers. lecturers. We also have administration. Definitely not people. So we have these different groups, right? And so 
undergraduate extends from student, and student extends from person. But notice that undergraduate doesn't know anything about faculty or administrators or anything else, okay? So you can only go up the tree in that sense. You can only go up the tree. The other thing that we can do is we can cast variables. And so we can, for example, change colors here. We can instantiate a variable by saying, as, as we've seen, by saying undergraduate U is new undergraduate. This is how we would normally define some, some object that we want to use. And when we do this, we get four bytes allocated for U and a pointer on the heap that, that takes up enough space for the undergraduate. So that takes space for all of the variables in undergraduate, like year, for example. It takes up space for all of the variables in student, like GPA, for example. And it takes up all of the variables in person, like red ID name and email, and so on. Okay. So all of that gets put into the heap. So we have enough space to store all of that information. You can, for example, say I have a student, S, which is a new undergraduate. There are very few occasions when you really want to do this, but it's possible to do it, because what happens is we get space allocated for an undergraduate object, which has all of the things that undergraduate has, which has all of the things that student has, which has all of the things that person has. Because undergraduate includes on the heap space for everything in student, this is valid code because we have enough space on the heap. You don't have access through S to any of the methods from undergraduate, but there's space there that's stored for them. But you cannot do it the other way. So you cannot say undergraduate U is new student. Because if you do that, we only get space allocated on the heap for whatever a student is. And the student only has access to its methods and the methods in its predecessors. It doesn't have access to the methods in the undergraduate class. And so there won't be enough space on the heap for that um, particular object. So this will not compile. This will give you a compile time error. <laughs>